that weighs no more than a nickel. It can fly 500 miles across the Gulf of Mexico. Huh, you say, oh, such a thing surely would not exist. But do you know that the ruby-throated hummingbird actually weighs less than a nickel, and it makes this perilous flight successfully each year without ever having done it before? In fact, this little bird flies alone. It doesn't fly in a traditional V-shaped migratory pattern with the other birds to show it the way. It goes it all alone. In a normal condition, you'll find this bird in midsummer weighing about a penny, or in other words, 2.5 grams, gathering its food from red-colored flowers while it keeps its body weight basically constant. By using their long tongue, they're able to catch insects, another important protein ingredient for their diet. The hummingbird's high metabolism, though, puts it only hours away from death by starvation in a typical day. Now, this bird has a blade-like wing that uh, connects in one position at the shoulder point. Now, that allows them to rotate that wing 180 degrees, which allows them then to be able to fly forwards or turn and fly backwards. Their typical flight speed is about 30 miles per hour, but some of them have been clocked up to 63 miles per hour while they're doing some of their diving moves. While feeding, their heart rate increases to an incredible 1,200 beats per minute. And during their courtship dive, when they, when they do their dive in order to impress their, their prospective mate, their wings can flap up to 200 beats per second. Now in September, many of these hummingbirds can be found in southern Florida where the males and the females aggressively defend their feeding grounds. And during this time, the ruby-throated hummingbird starts feeding more than ever before. Now there's a reason behind that. Their weight is going to increase from about a penny to a little less than a nickel. Instinctively, they are starting to feed in order to begin their 500-mile flight over the Gulf of Mexico. And they're going to do that through headwinds and sidewinds and, yes, even hurricanes. Many of them will make it. Some of them will not. Fishermen have said that they've seen these fast-flying birds all of a sudden appear over their boats in the middle of this vast body of water, seemingly knowing where they're headed. Ah, more than seemingly, my friend, they do know where they're headed. Each bird flies alone, not in the flock, but not behind their parents. They instinctively know where to go. Now, this flight is going to take them somewhere between 18 to 22 hours to complete, depending on the weather conditions. It could never occur unless they had fed first in Florida and doubled their body weight for this marathon journey. When the trip is over, these birds end up as far south as northern Panama, and with their weight depleted considerably, they must start immediately feeding again in order to rejuvenate their bodies so that they can winter in the warmer climates where their food uh, is available. Now, following this wintering event, Many of these ruby-throated hummingbirds go through the same migrating procedure where they almost double their body weight in Central America, preparing for this solo non-stop 500-mile trip back to Florida. It's been calculated that this bird could fly up to 1,400 miles if they had no headwinds or crosswinds and they had a starting weight of about a nickel. Now, in early spring, many of them arrive back in Florida, close to their original breeding grounds. And here, the males compete for land and perform tricks for the females to attract them. Some of these include flying about 50 feet in the air and then dropping rapidly to the ground in a dive and turning up just at the last second before hitting the ground, making a U-shaped path. After laying eggs and hatching the next generation of ruby-throated hummingbirds, the mother and father will not, no, they will not, help their children migrate to warmer and food-plenty places like Panama. Instead, this new generation instinctively knows it needs to follow in the steps of what its parents have done before it. Though the parents haven't communicated with them and aren't there to teach them how, they first raise their own weight 
and then make their trip across the Gulf all alone. As some have said, it is a scientific puzzle that these birds, through instinct, know all these life-critical skills. Could it be, my friend, that not through evolution, but through a masterful designer who understands energy and flight systems perfectly, these birds were created. They were created, not evolved. Could it possibly be? Could it be his handiwork, my friend? You decide.